In the opening scene, two friends arrive on a mysterious looking island, hoping to find a lost treasure. There is nothing but water on all sides, and not even a single organism lives there. The friends slowly make their way to the island, when suddenly, it starts moving. To their horror, the island turns out to be a large blue whale, which has been chained by someone or something. Following this, the movie cuts to some weeks in the past. At midnight, a majestic white mare dashes across a vast wheat field, creating a trail of luminous light behind it. The next morning, an old farmer summons his three sons to display the sorry sight of their ravaged wheat field. Since their only source of income is getting destroyed, the man orders his sons to keep watch at night, hoping to catch the culprit behind Behind it. The brothers then delegate this responsibility to the youngest one named John. John is scared of the dark, and he knows that the task at hand is immense, but to gain his father's trust, he agrees to keep watch. In the evening, John strikes up a friendly conversation with the hedgehog he had rescued earlier. As he chats, he notices the silhouette of the mare, and quickly throws a rope in its direction. Suddenly, the rope tightens, and the mare begins to drag John through the fields and meadows. At one point, he is even dragged through the skies, from where he can see the beautiful village. John is mesmerized by the view, and he begins shouting with joy. But his happy time soon comes to an end when the mare crashes and they both end up in a bog. John manages to get himself out, but the mare remains stuck. Seeing the poor animal drowning, John forgets his mission and instead tries to help it. He tries pulling the giant mare out by himself, but the beast doesn't even budge. So, he powers up a nearby wheat mill and eventually rescues it. The mare, overwhelmed with gratitude, sheds a tear, which touches John deeply. He then releases the mare from its bindings, making it promise that it will no longer trample their fields. After the mare departs, John looks upon the desolate wheat field and realizes that he will have to bear the consequences of the destruction the next day. The morning after the incident, John wakes up in the stable, where he is amazed to find two magnificent black royal horses as he takes in the sight of these creatures. He suddenly hears a voice in the background, which startles him. Reacting quickly, he grabs a pitchfork and attempts to defend himself, but when he approaches the source of the noise, John is surprised to find a small, humpbacked magic foal. He can miraculously speak, just like a human. Foal informs John that the mare he encountered earlier is his mother, and she has gifted these two horses to him, with Foal himself coming along to support John. Not long after, the old farmer screams out in despair upon seeing the state of the destroyed wheat field, causing John to panic. Sensing the problematic situation, Foal acts swiftly, carrying John on his back as they race away from the field with great speed. Along the way, John expresses his desire to sell the horses to acquire some much-needed funds. Foal once again agrees to help and lets out a piercing whistle, summoning the horses to their location before John's family could capture them. Now, now, with the majestic horses in tow, the group sets off on a journey to the bustling market town, hoping to find a suitable buyer. Upon arriving there, John is bombarded with offers from eager buyers, vying for the chance to own the regal horses. However, because of greed, he chooses to retain the animals and sell them only to the richest person in the area. That person is revealed to be none other than the king. As John walks near the Grand Palace, the king spots the horses and becomes mesmerized. However, instead of buying them, like a gentleman, he orders his men to capture them, saying a poor farmer like John could have never bought the horses by himself. Feeling dejected and without any funds, John turns to Fool for help. The latter once again lets out a whistle, summoning the horses back to John's side. But in the process, the animals knock the king over into a nearby bag of flour. Despite the king's anger, he keeps his composure in front of the gathered public. John then proposes a trade, requesting two silver hats in exchange for the horses. However, one of the king's courtiers reminds him that the horses are bound to keep running back to John. Taking this into account, the king offers him the prestigious role of the most important groom in the palace. John is over the moon to have received such an opportunity, so he accepts without thinking twice. And, because of the announcement, the entire crowd also starts cheering for him. They believe that he is the animal whisperer. As John gains more and more popularity among the people, the king becomes increasingly jealous of him and seeks to find a way to execute him. However, he cannot find a valid reason to do so. But, 
one day, his courtier gives him an idea. According to his plan, he has to send John on a mission to capture the legendary Firebird. Since it is an impossible task, John will surely fail, and this can be used as a reason to execute him. Hearing this, the king starts laughing maniacally and sends the order. Oh. <laughs> Elsewhere, when John learns about the mission, he becomes determined to complete it. Full warns him that the Firebird has never been tamed by anyone, and this might prove to be an impractical task, but John is determined to impress the villagers. So, the two eventually set out on their journey. Along the way, they venture into the forest to collect some dream nuts <laughs> to lure the Firebird. John is curious and wants to try the nuts, but I want to lick the dream nuts. But Full forbids him from eating them, warning him that they act as a sedative. Following this, they walk all day and finally reach an oasis in the desert, which is the abode of the Firebird. There, they see a warning about the presence of liquid sand. Regardless, John throws the dream nuts and hides nearby. After a while, the majestic bird emerges from the ground and begins munching on those nuts. According to the plan, the nuts begin to intoxicate the bird, but before falling asleep, it notices the two and starts to attack. John and Fole are almost killed on many occasions, but they always come to the rescue of one another. The entire landscape is also demolished because of the ensuing chase, but in the end, the nuts finally knock out the Firebird, allowing John to capture it with chains. The next day, John and Full find the Firebird looking weak and shedding a fiery tear. Full explains that the bird can only be hot when it is free. If it remains on the ground for a long time, it loses all its energy. Hearing this, John feels pity for the bird, so he decides to free it. As soon as he takes the chains off, the beast regains its fire and flies away into the skies. But not before leaving a fire feather for John. Now that the mission has failed, Full suggests that they not return to the kingdom, as it may result in John's execution. However, our brave but stubborn protagonist is sure the fire feather will prove that they caught the firebird. Upon their return, the king orders their execution, as expected. John tries to prove himself, explaining that he caught the bird but then set it free out of compassion. However, the king refuses to believe his story, and an executioner raises an axe to deliver the final blow. Low. But right then, the majestic Firebird appears, casting a bright light over the kingdom. It heard John's pleas for help and has now arrived to return the favor. The people are baffled when they notice the Firebird following John's orders. Hence, the king reluctantly allows John to live, and also throws a feast in his honor. That night, John is celebrated as a hero in the kingdom. As the king's frustration grows, he is instigated by his courtier to send John on an impossible task, to retrieve the King Maiden, who resides in an ice kingdom atop a high rock. The king is convinced that John will fail, and thereby he will have a reason to execute him. So, the very next day, a messenger announces the king's new assignment to John, who accepts the challenge without any hesitation. After scaling the treacherous high rock mountains, John and Fole finally arrive at the entrance of the palace, where the king maiden resides. However, they find that the palace is blocked by a massive wall of ice, making it impossible to enter. But, with the help of the feather gifted by the Firebird, John is able to melt down the ice barrier, causing a ton of water to gush out. Unfortunately, this freezes full in a ball of ice, sending him tumbling down the cliff. The landing is a bad one, but he manages to survive without any injuries. Meanwhile, John enters the palace where he comes across the Empress. He introduces himself to be a matchmaker sent by the King, but the Empress tells him that she has no interest in marrying as there are no heroes left. To test his bravery, she jumps off a cliff, and John immediately follows suit to rescue her. Impressed by his courage, the Empress deploys her gown as a parachute and starts descending slowly. But just then, John accidentally punctures the gown, causing both of them to tumble at great speed. It appears as if they are going to die, a painful death, but Fole shows up with a pair of new wings and rescues both of them. Later that night, the three camp in the middle of the forest before continuing their journey back to the kingdom. During this time, Fole advises John to abandon the Empress and flee to save himself, but he refuses. The Empress, who has been eavesdropping on their conversation, is flustered by John's loyalty. The next morning, the trio arrive at the kingdom, where John is greeted with a hero's welcome. Everyone is surprised to see that John has returned from his mission alive, which only fuels the king's growing resentment towards him. Despite this, the king is compelled to reward him one more time. Later that night, John confides in full about his feelings for the Empress and decides to visit her. He takes some flowers and climbs up to her window, but there their reunion is cut short when some courtiers enter with clothes for her to
to wear. After a while, the Empress finally meets the King, and gets displeased to learn that he's the age of her father. Outside, John becomes jealous upon seeing the two together. The King wants to marry the Empress the very next day, but she is reluctant. In order to delay it, she mentions that it is her family heritage to get married with a special ring. But sadly, the ring was lost in the ocean. Hearing this, the King becomes enraged, and so he sends John on yet another impossible task. That same night, as Full ponders John's erratic behavior, he sees the spirit of a whale soaring through the sky. Full speaks with the sun, moon, and wind, and learns that the ring is inside the belly of a giant whale, which has now turned into an island. In the early hours of the day, John and Full set off on a journey to the whale fish, only to find her bound by chains. Full manages to communicate with the whale, and learns that she was put in this state by some sailors as a punishment. Her crime? She devoured several ships for fun. At that time, she was young and naive, but now she regrets her actions. Soon after, the whale sheds a tear, which gives John an idea to make her sneeze and break free from the chains. So, they ride into the whale's nostrils and tickle its interior with the tip of Full's feathers. The plan works, and the large mammal starts struggling to itch itself. In the process, it breaks free of all its chains, and also releases the trapped ships after decades. The whale then rewards John and Full the precious ring as a gesture of thanks. In the next scene, the two make their way back to the Empress's window to deliver the ring. However, their presence does not go unnoticed, as guards and a courtier spot them through a scope and rush to capture John. The commotion wakes the king, who grabs his gun and rushes to the window. Seeing full, the king shoots him without hesitation. On the other hand, the guards storm into the bedchamber and arrest John, falsely accusing him of kidnapping the king maiden. After this, the king gets ready to marry the Empress, but in order to buy more time, she demands that he rejuvenate himself through a recipe passed down from her grandmother. She requires him to bathe in three cauldrons, one filled with boiling water, the second with ice water, and the third with boiling milk. The plan is a clever one, but it results in even deeper problems for John. Sensing that it may be a trap, a courtier advises the king to test the cauldrons on John before subjecting himself to the process. At night, the Empress secretly confides in Full that she knows how to nullify the effect of the boiling contents. She reveals that throwing her grandmother's ring in the first cauldron, a feather from the firebird into the second, and the flower of life and death that grows at the end of the world in the third cauldron will cancel out the deadly effects. Wait a sec, that third one sounds kind of hard to find. She claims that John's survival hinges on their success in executing this plan. Full, who was injured by the gunshot earlier, knows that it is a treacherous mission that may result in his demise. But for the sake of his best friend, he sets out to find the flower. Since he cannot fly anymore, he uses his lightning speed to travel to the end of the world. Full eventually finds the flower, but it warns him that whosoever plucks it will be awaiting death. Despite the ominous warning, Full plucks the flower to save John. In the morning, the king hypocritically declares that he is giving John a chance at redemption and orders him to jump into the cauldrons. The latter believes that he is about to die, so he bravely professes his love for the Empress. He then jumps into the boiling water, and at the same time, the Empress successfully throws the ring into the first cauldron, helping John emerge unharmed. In the second cauldron, the firebird drops a feather, keeping John safe once again. Meanwhile, Full manages to deliver the flower just just in time for John to be saved in the third and final cauldron. After successfully completing his rejuvenation, John appears before the Empress, who is amazed at his transformation. The king is also shocked and believes that the recipe actually makes people younger, so he jumps into the first cauldron. But as soon as he does so, a huge bubble emerges and carries him away inside of it. The people of the kingdom only laugh at his misfortune and instead start chanting for John. The king is an asshole! Throw him in the milk! Meanwhile, the Empress and John notice that Full is missing, so they start searching for him. They soon find him sitting patiently, waiting for his death, as he had plucked the flower. However, the Empress reveals that the flower's warning was simply a test to assess the bravery of the person who picked it. She could have told him that before he left. She also clears that if Full had not plucked it, he would actually have died, but now he won't. Hearing this, Full delightfully gets up and hugs his best friend. In the final scene, the crowd cheers for John demanding that he become the new king. He happily accepts and vows to protect the kingdom with all his might. The movie ends as John and the Empress finally get married and take over the kingdom as the newly crowned king and queen. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.